It's time for another good word from God's word. Here we are at First Chronicles chapter 7. We've been reading through the Bible uh, chapter by chapter, and uh, if you've been with us at least in the last week with Chronicles, it has not really been a page turner. Uh, what we've been doing over the last several chapters is they've been going over the tribes of Israel and all of their children and uh, and the descendants of each one of the different tribes of Israel and where they uh, put their land and, and where they were in the place. And really, to the modern reader, uh, this is like, what is happening? And I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of times where if I'm reading this, uh, if I'm reading this part of Chronicles, I just kind of skim. I don't even read it that much because you're like, what does this have to do with me? But uh, the reason why this is even in the Bible is because for the Israelites, this portion was extremely important because it identified who your ancestors were. It helped you identify what, what clan you were part of, uh, what tribe you were part of. And uh, later on, what we're going to see is uh, when the Israelites come back from exile, which we saw happening at the end of Second Kings, when they come back from exile, they have to prove that they are an actual Israelite. And the way that they prove that they're an Israelite is by showing their genealogical records. And so that's what we find here in Chronicles, is their genealogical records records of where did they come from and how did they get here. The other thing that it shows is the land that each clan and each tribe took. And the reason why that's important is because what was supposed to happen, it didn't actually happen, but what was supposed to happen is that uh, by the year of Jubilee, every 50 years that they were a nation, all of the land that had moved around was all supposed to revert back to the original families and revert back uh, to the uh, to those clans and to those tribes. So even though the borders may move, uh, every 50 years it's supposed to reset back because this is the ancestral land that God had promised them. And so this is extremely important to the Israelites. This is extremely important to uh, Jesus. This is important to the disciples. Uh, and and to, I, I'm not sure if it's still important uh, to Jews today. I would have to talk to a Jewish person. And uh, and to be honest, I just haven't I haven't found someone said there where I can ask the question. Uh, but, you know, it still is there of of that, that this why this is even in the Bible and why they decided to include it. And so where do we find what's important for us in this? Why do they even put this stuff in here? Hey, uh, Tyler, thank you for watching this here. Hope you have a great new uh, Christmas and New Year as well. Uh, why are we even, uh, what are we supposed to get out of this? And my thought was, as I was reading through this, is to ask the question, where do you come from? Because our family of origin, our grandparents, our great grandparents, all of those places where we originally came from, whether you're, uh, I'm here in Sarasota, Florida, but I wasn't born in Sarasota, Florida, I was born in Georgia. And, and, and where you come from and, and what family you come from, all of that measure, all of that determines uh, how you look at the world and the, the culture that you're part of, how you interact with the world. That family of origin makes a big difference in your life and then because so when you are having problems in your life when you're having uh recurring issues when you're trying to figure out what to do uh with your life or dealing with situations like parenting or conflict resolution what we will do is we will default back to the uh, def uh we will uh, automatically default back to our family of origin we will default back to where we came from because that was modeled for us and a lot of what we do is either uh, either a direct reaction to it, like we're not going to do the opposite of that, or we are going to do, uh, or we're going to do exactly what we saw modeled because we thought that was the best thing. But the good thing is, is that we are not supposed to stay this way. What if we are followers of Christ and if we're followers of Jesus, what we need to do is we need to continually to become like him as we grow in our faith in jesus and we grow learn more about him and more learn about learn more about what he does and start to practice the things that jesus does if we uh spend time in prayer and reading the scriptures and uh spending time with other christians what we will do is we will start to become more and more like christ and we and as we become more like christ that family of origin doesn't make as much sense anymore because God actually says, or Paul, Paul says that uh, once we are 
saved. We are adopted into his family. And when we're adopted into that family, that becomes our new family of origin. And so we are part of the family of Christ and family of Jesus. And we are gradually becoming more and more like him, ultimately to the point where when we pass away and we go to heaven, uh, or, or we get to go to heaven, when that happens, uh, we get to that ultimate glorification, that ultimate time where we are, we, uh, we've said completely goodbye to sin. We no longer have to deal with temptation. And we are the, we, we become more, the most like Christ. And I don't know about you, but I certainly look forward to that. And so what I'm trying to do every single day, and I hope you do too, is to practice the disciplines, to practice the things that I know that will bring me closer to Christ, Spend time, spending time with him in the word and in prayer, spending time with other people uh, that, that also follow Christ, and doing what I can to do what the Bible says, to, to have the fruit of the Spirit of love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. And those are the fruits of the Spirit. And so if, as I become more like Christ, more and more of those things will become evident in my own life. And I hope that is true of you as well. So that's today's good word from God's Word. I hope you're doing great this Saturday. We got a big, huge announcement next Sunday, or not next Sunday, tomorrow. Uh, we've been raising money for Compassion in Action. And guys, it's a huge number. I can't tell you anymore, but it's a big number. And you are going to want to tune into service, whether if you're watching online, tune into service. If you can be here in person, you want to be here in person, it's going to be a big celebration. Uh, and also, uh, we're continuing on our other series, Home for Christmas, and we're talking about Elf, which is a great Christmas classic, and what we can learn about God through that whole thing. So it's going to be a good time. Hope you're doing well, and we will see you all here next time. Bye-bye.